Hey my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. We begin with some interesting details for The Mandalorian Season 3. Jon Favreau has commented on the helmet situation to do with Din Djarin. So after Season 2, fans have been wondering if he's going to remove it more going forward or if he's going to revert back to the stricter ways of the tribe and keep it on. After all, he only removed it in emergency situations and for Grogu to take one last look at him before the two of them separated, but then the Book of Boba Fett came along and answered that for us. Not only was Din still subservient to the code of the Children of the Watch, but when he was kicked out by the armorer for removing his helmet, he is now seeking to atone for his sins in the living waters of Mandalore. So you might think, question answered, Din will not remove his helmet anymore. Not so fast, my dear friends, because in the new book, the art of the Mandalorian season 2, Jon Favreau has teased what's to come. He teased that Mando's encounter with Bo-Katan in season 2 and maybe even future meetings that he's going to have with other Mandalorians will make Din question the way of the tribe. What I suspect is going to happen in season 3 is that on his mission to find the living waters, pressing issues on the planet will mean that Mando encounters other surviving Mandalorians, ones from various different clans, and this is something long rumoured for the show. He's going to realise that none of the others live by the dogmatic rules of the tribe and that might strike a revelation or an awakening within him that he can still be a Mandalorian without having to always keep his helmet on. In other words, he's going to realise that there are other ways to be a legitimate Mando outside of the rules of the Watch. And as Jon Favreau says, this awakening has already started and his encounter with Bo-Katan already planted the seeds of doubt in Din's mind. So we must wonder if Din is going to take a more lenient approach to being a Mandalorian and even dissociate from the tribe. And in that sense, could that be in some way a setup for the armorer to be a villain in the upcoming seasons of Mando? Well, I think that's already happened and the setup was in chapter five of the Book of Boba Fett. When she kicked Din out of the tribe, I saw that as her setting Din a challenge to find those living waters. And I think even if he does find them, along the way part of his story arc is to learn how to let go of the tribe while still holding on to his Mandalorian identity. With time, he might even realise there's no point in trying to atone because he can still be a Mandalorian without the rigidness of that tradition. And we've got to remember here that he's the wielder of the Darksaber. I can definitely see him rising to the occasion of wanting to unite Mandalore and be its rightful ruler, and if so, why should he have to answer to anyone else? And I'm not saying any of this is going to happen in one episode, it's going to take time to let go, but Jon Favreau is saying he's already started to in his mind, and the influence of other Mandalorians are going to facilitate that, and I really want someone like Sabine Wren to come in to help with that character development in Din, and while she is confirmed for Ahsoka, I also hope she makes an appearance in The Mandalorian Season 3 as well. There is already so much precedent for this kind of overlap, so I could definitely see that happening. So what the directs say is that Favreau has teased that going forward into Season 3, this helmet plot point is going to be key. So before we move on to our next subject, I'm going to put it to you guys. Do you think Mando is going to learn to ease up on the rules that he's been indoctrinated to follow? Or will he try to atone for his sins and never remove his helmet again? And in a weird way, this answer is also dependent on Pedro Pascal. He's not on set for most episodes of Mando, nor was he on set for the Book of Boba Fett because he sends in his voice clips. Apart from the episodes, we do actually see him without the helmet. And if Din Djarin is going to be more lenient going forward, they will have to have Pedro Pascal on set a lot more. But with The Last of Us and all of the other things he's working on, that could be very difficult, so that could influence the story itself. But I don't know, I really don't see him staying with the tribe and I don't think that's the route he's going to go down. They've set up so much for him to eventually let go and still be a Mandalorian, but one that does not follow the tribe. I guess time will tell, so let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. So now, my dear friends, we're going to move on and talk about John Watts, who is reportedly in talks to direct an episode of a new Star Wars series. The director of Spider-Man No Way Home is certainly a solid choice for a Star Wars show, at least according to many fans on social media who praise the idea. So this report comes from Discussing Film, and they say that John Watts is going to direct one episode of the mysterious unannounced Star Wars project with the codename Grammar Rodeo. A week or two ago, I covered some theories on what this project might be, but just to recap, most sources say that it's going to be set during the High Republic era, but now there is a little bit of doubt and it could actually be a Mandoverse era show. Production on the series is slated to begin this summer in Los Angeles. Discussing films say that while they haven't been able to gather any concrete information on who's going to be writing this project, they've heard from a handful of 
sources that Jon Favreau is going to be executive producing. And it's this very fact that Favreau is attached that has many outlets questioning if this could be a Mandalorian spin-off show. But the outlets who first reported on this are still adamant it's High Republic. Even though plot details are very scarce, the Illuminati recently uncovered that the Star Wars series is looking for young lead roles between the ages of 10 to 12, as well as an older 30 to 40 year old man. Murphy's Multiverse backs this report, but they also add that shooting is going to wrap in December, and Bespin Bulletin reports that the project will begin filming in the summer at Manhattan Beach Studios. And the final piece of information that we know is from Cinelinks, who reports that Grammar Rodeo is the working title for a High Republic show that's going to be, quote, Stranger Things in Space. But guys, we simply have no clue at this point, and we're just waiting for Lucasfilm to make an official announcement. So now guys, some more great news for The Mandalorian Season 3. We kind of already knew this with what Carl Weathers has tweeted, but it's now confirmed he is going to direct as well as star in Season 3. Not only is he amazing as Grief Karga, but he also directed my favourite episode of this show, Chapter 12 The Siege, which is the one episode of The Mandalorian which is the most contextual to what's going on behind the scenes. And I'm talking about the Imperial Remnant. We saw those cloning facilities, which was the biggest curveball we could have expected. I remember I remember everyone thinking at the time, since this is not the Ahsoka episode, is it just going to be a filler one? Absolutely not. Chapter 12 came and it was an absolute thrilling ride. And I really hope the episode he directs in season 3 is going to expand the Imperial Remnant story. Show us Moff Gideon escaping New Republic prison and give us more Dr. Pershing and the cloning projects. And while we all know what it's going to lead to in the timeline, at this very early stage, I would love to see some failed clones and the atrocities the Imperial Remnant was getting up to. We're so hyper-focused on the Darksaber story and the story of Mando and Grogu, and rightly so, but we can't forget this aspect of it as well. So bring on season 3. And so finally my dear friends, just a quick update for LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Yesterday we got some more footage, some more information of behind the scenes of the game, because IGN released the developer diary. In the video we see how expansive this game is going to be, and the two biggest takeaways is that you can board any big ship you want, and you can start with any episode or any trilogy that you desire. You don't have to do it 1-9, to nine. you can literally dive into Attack of the Clones and go absolutely crazy. Something really funny I picked up on is Sy Snootles being chased by Max Rebo. Those two lovebirds cannot be separated, and just to reiterate guys, Max Rebo did not die in the Book of Boba Fett. He was not there that night at Garza Sanctuary. So when you're playing the LEGO Star Wars game, do not feel sad when you see him, he's still alive. But otherwise my dear friends, that brings us to the end of this video. If you guys enjoyed this one, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new and a huge welcome if you are, and why not become a patron? Join the Megalorian community with the link down below. You not only get access to our Discord server, but also over 100 videos not found here on YouTube. But until the next one, may the force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg, have a good one.